thing's for sure. As soon as you get into astronomy, you start to accumulate a lot of crap. And I have shelves full of these little black things. This isn't even including all the dust caps, all the stuff I'm actually using on the telescope right now. I want to go through a little bit about the image train, back focal distance, and why it's sort of important to hang on to all of this crap most of the time. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, and you're watching Star Stuff. If you're in the Southern Hemisphere, you have access to the best beer, the best wine, the best coffee, and the best skies, of course. Uh, but you don't have access to the best shipping because we're on the other side of the planet and it costs a bunch to get stuff from overseas. And usually that stuff is not guaranteed or you've got to ship it back for repairs uh, or it comes in through the grey market. So you really need an Australian vendor to look after you. If that is the case for you, I highly recommend Bintel. I use Bintel for all my Australian purchases of astronomy equipment. They're a Celestron authorised dealer and they stock a wide range of other brands as well. They have pretty much everything you need for astronomy. And drop my name and I'm sure they'll give you the Dylan discount. It's www.bintel.com.au So in this video I want to talk all about image trains. You might have heard that term. An image train basically means the path that the light takes from your telescope to the camera. It ends up in this big long thing at the end or sometimes at the front if you're using Hyperstar or Rasa of your telescope and it pays to know what's going on in the image train and how different image trains can be configured to get the most out of your astrophotos. So what I set up last night, Celestron 9 and a quarter Edge HD telescope, nice flat field. I'm using the 0.7x reducer to reduce that to f7 instead of f10 uh, and that pulls down that focal length from 2,350 millimeters to one, I think it's 1,680 millimeters. Uh, I'll have to check that. And then we have a T spacer, and that gives a little bit more length over here. And then I have the filter wheel. This is just a one and a quarter inch filter wheel, uh, manual, nothing motorized or anything like that. Then I've got a little adapter shim here to put in the ZWO 1600 NM, and. That sounds simple enough, but there is actually a bunch of little things along the way. There's the male to female or male to male adapters along the way. There's this big adapter that comes with the OTA that you need at the end of this. And sometimes it gets really confusing to remember, especially when you've got something set up and working, to remember what you've done. Take a photo, because I never remember how this is set up later. So the back focal distance is the distance from the optic itself to the point where the light actually focuses into a tight circle and that's burning a little bit so it looks like the back focal distance of this is about 29 centimeters 29 to 30 centimeters of course this is a reducer and i'm holding it backwards so that doesn't make any sense but you get the idea little trick if you don't have a ruler you can just eyeball it just hold the optic up to the sun as if i do that it's like you guys don't trust me or something but when we talk about back focal distance on our gear and our image train setup like this we're talking about the last optic here. We're not talking about the filter wheel or anything like that. This here is the last piece of glass, the reducer, before it then focuses that beam. So you look up the back focal distance of the reducer itself, or whatever you've got in here, maybe it's a Barlow or whatever, and you're measuring across from there to the camera chip. Now the camera chip is about here, and sure enough the ideal back focal distance here is about 146 millimeters according to the instruction manual. Thanks, John. Now this is going to be different for things like eyepieces and Barlow's. Uh, the Barlow optic is in here and it has a back focal distance but that back focal distance is actually up inside the tube because that's where your eyepiece is going to sit and that's where you want it to focus. Now you can get all technical with this and use calipers and rulers and whatnot to actually make sure that your gear is in the right focal distance uh, but really I just use trial and error. Um, if you find that your getting huge vignetting on the corners, then the distance is wrong. If you find that you are focusing and you just can't reach focus with this particular image train, then your back focal distance is wrong. And that's when you need to start thinking about these things in here which are adding the space. In this case, the T-spacer 
or maybe the spacer thread here, or maybe you need to introduce new spacers into your image train to reach that back focal distance. And that's where it becomes nice to know actually what that distance is and try and achieve it. If you're like me and you're lazy though, you just set up, focus, see if it works, and if it doesn't work, you throw in a spacer, see if that works, and so on and so on until you just get it. Uh, however, most vendors will actually step you through this process. Tell them what telescope you're using, tell them what reducer you're using, tell them what camera you're using, and they'll work it out. And they'll tell you what the back focal distance is and whether you can fit a filter wheel in there or not. Another thing to think about in your image train, especially if you're getting vignetting or really dark circles around the corners, is it might not be the spacing at all. It might actually be the filter wheel. 1.25 inch hole, and the corners of that hole can get into your image if your camera chip is big enough. I actually had just that problem last night where I set all this up, saw the first few frames coming down, realized that the filter wheel was blocking that corner and just came in and pushed it in a little bit, looked at the test frames and made sure it was out of the way. So let's go through some of these things. This is the reducer I was talking about and it comes with two separate kinds of spacing. You'd throw that at the end of your telescope. This optic here is where you'd measure the back focal distance from, so from here. Depending on whether I was going to use a filter wheel or not, it came with these two different spacers. So this one has enough space to reach back focal distance with a color camera where I don't need filters. And this one has a little gap here, so there's more space for a filter wheel. Spacers in general will become part of your collection. Um, I have two different sizes here, depending on what I've got hooked up. You can buy like spacer sets where you've got the 20 mil, the five mil, the one mil, two mil. I'd recommend getting a bunch of them because you end up using all sorts of different combinations and it's really good to have a set of spaces that you can experiment with. Of course, you have the 1.25 inch slip in. Uh, that is for slipping into things like a diagonal. And obviously this is not gonna fit in the massive Celestron Luminous, so you need some sort of a adapter for that, which is where this little adapter comes in. Now I can push that in, then I could put a camera in or whatever on that. But honestly, I never recommend that. Get rid of the star diagonal for any kind of astrophotography. Uh, what you're doing is basically making your image only as good as the last crappy mirror it passed through and this is going to be the crappiest mirror of your whole image train. The mirrors inside the telescope are wonderful and they're coated beautifully and you don't want to introduce a substandard mirror at the end of the process. Uh, moreover, every time you go through a mirror the light's degrading every single time. Here's an off-axis guider. Um, off-axis guiding can be useful in your image train if you want to guide at that point rather than on the top of your telescope. I'd recommend it for using with the reducers as well because when you're shooting at f10 it can be very hard to find a guide star. You can see the light actually comes in and gets bounced off a little prism so you can have a camera hanging off the side and guide from that at the back of your scope rather than on top of your scope. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea. I generally don't use it. A lot of people swear by it. Um, just because I was shooting at f10 for a while there, it became problematic with the stars. Um, for that reason, I will probably sell this, so if anyone wants it, make me an offer. Of course, I've got my Hyperstar filters. These should all actually be in separate bags, because you don't want your filters to scratch on each other. But every time I finish a session, I, put it, I try to put it in a separate bag, so I've got the Hyperstar drawers, which I'm now using with the Rasa 8 and Rasa 11 as well. Super useful. Now the Rasas themselves come with a whole suite of adapters, including these different plates if you want to switch between the different camera sizes and spacing arrangements. So you've got a whole number of different options, even tiny little ones. And final tip, once you find an image train that works, uh, in this case, this is my planetary setup where I've got my motorized filter wheel, the adapter for the power mate, uh, and then the nose here to screw into the telescope. Once you find something that works, if you don't need it for anything else, just leave it set up. Leave the whole image train set up ready to go. So when you feel like doing switching to planetary or whatever, you just unscrew the back of your telescope, put this in, put the camera in, and you're ready to go. So if you can keep a complete image train like that, always ideal. And of course, uh, if you're anal like me, you put everything 
into Ziploc bags. That's a lot of Ziploc bags. There is no hard and fast rule, you just want to find that back focal distance and keep a massive collection of adapters and keep them clean so that when you need them, they're there. And it's frustrating, sometimes you'll have nights where you just cannot find that one little thing that you needed and you go rifling through all your stuff. Um, so keep them organised if you like, I don't. And that's it really. Uh, be sure to check out the sponsor of this video and thank them for their support. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. Everything is meaningless. Hello darkness my old friend I've come to talk with And we're all going to die.